today is a very big milestone in the history of Bone Hall Clinic. It is 35 years today since Louise Brown, the world's first IVF baby, was born. And we are celebrating it as Founders Day. We are uh, dedicating this day to the memory of Patrick Steptoe and Robert Edwards, who founded this clinic. And there will be an unveiling of a plaque in their memory uh, at this clinic. At the time before Louise Brown was born was a time of huge excitement for the whole family. It's something Dad had been working for years towards. Um, we knew it was also going to be a very difficult time because the eyes of the world's press were upon them. Their critics were just waiting for something to go wrong. Um, so it was a difficult as well as a very exciting time. And just before, before the birth of Louise Brown, we went up to the Yorkshire Dales, which was one of Dad's favourite places for a bit of peace and relaxation. Um, and then when he got the call from Patrick, he went off down to Oldham and left us there up in the Yorkshire Dales. And when we finally got the news, it was just fantastic. Huge relief all round that she was a perfect baby girl and everything had just gone fantastically. So. It was just an amazingly memorable time. I am now handing the baby to Dr. Edwards, whose brains, skill and perseverance has made this birth possible. He started this work some 20 years ago. I think that Bob has always been um, almost the most important person in, our, in my life and my son's life because of obviously for what he did for us, but also the support and the kindness and um, the involvement that he has shown in our lives ever since Alistair was born. So I can't describe really how much he meant, you know, he has meant to us in our lives. Uh, my memories of the uh, very early days of Professor Edwards uh, growing up was of a very uh, kind, caring, uh, honest, and, well, a, fa a very human person. It was a, uh, maybe slightly eccentric, but <laughs> in, in such a great, fun, genuine way. I mean, you could not honestly meet a much a more nicer man. I think, but it's one of like one of my uh, early like, funny funny moments of being with him was uh, was being in, in his old Mercedes in the back of his car, and he was demonstrating his uh, his air conditioning system to me which was both back windows open and me being blown about in the back. So, I mean, he had a very great down-to-earth sense of humour and, yeah, just, I, was, I was always in complete awe of him, to be honest. So. Well, he was just like a granddad sort of person to me. Um, obviously, when I, was, when I got older, Mum explained everything and um, how they helped him and how they helped Mum in that. So, um yeah, it just felt like sort of a, yeah, like a granddad, sort of very special. And obviously without their help, mum wouldn't have had me and obviously all the thousands of other children that have been born. So, uh, yeah, definitely just like a granddad. This room that we are in today used to be Patrick Steptoe's office and his consultation room. And there was a great big oak table here in front with, a, with his chair behind that. And this is the room that I was interviewed in for my first job here way back in December 1983 when I was a young gynecologist in my 30s. Um, it was an intimidating experience coming into Patrick Steptoe's presence and being interviewed in this room. But I was delighted to be accepted for a job here straight after that. The only memory I've got of Patrick is when we went, Natalie was toddling around. Um, we went to his house and uh, obviously they had a big swimming pool in the back garden and being kids, we sort of, uh, me and that sister is messing about and I threatened to push her in. <laughs> and Patrick went, no, you're not. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> That's sort of the only, because he, um, he died when I was 10, so. But no, I definitely remember that. He scared me to death. <laughs> Just this big boomy voice, and it was like, ooh, okay, I'm not, I'm just gonna not do anything, sir. He was an old-fashioned gynaecologist, very strict in what he did, and 
but very meticulous in his work. He was passionate about his patients and used to treat them extremely well. He took very detailed histories from them, examined them thoroughly, and he was very honest with them about their chances of conception. Um, Patrick was um, a stickler for doing things correctly and for newcomers to learn the procedure by watching him for a long, long time. Um, in fact, when I joined here in 1984, it was almost a year before he let me actually do a procedure myself. Until that time, I was following him around and uh, learning from him and watching the way he did things. The last 35 years have seen us uh, improving all the time in terms of success for IVF. In the early days, back in the early 80s, we were delivering around about a 10% take-home baby rate. Now that figure is near 50% and consistently 50%. In order to achieve that, there have been huge changes in, the, in the, our understanding of the conditions in which we have to keep the embryos, and there have also been clinical practice changes, like the advent of ultrasound uh, in terms of imaging the ovary and the growing eggs within it, and also um, in terms of the treatment of male infertility. We've come a long way in our understanding of how to manage poor sperm. persisting and keeping going. So, uh, I would like Louise and Alistair to open the... Uh, no, but just do it. See that thing on the side there? Ready? Today we try to maintain the work here exactly the way Stepto would have liked us to maintain it. Of, of course we have moved on in the scientific uh, breakthroughs that have come about since then and we've moved on with um, some of the treatment options we offer patient but the spirit of the treatment and the, and the ethos of what we do remains what Patrick Stepto wanted in the early days.